Here comes Jasprit Bumrah, and fast bowlers tend to have long memories. Well, we all remember this. Bumrah getting stuck into Jimmy Anderson. It was quite unpleasant to watch, and there were plenty of words flying around. Anderson will be reminding him that it's his turn and with Mark Wood steaming in he's not going to get many in his half either here he goes but these tailenders firstly Umra then Siraj have got to try and get stuck in try and sneak another 18 or so get that lead up to 200 it's a good piece of bowling from Robinson, the slower ball, smart thinking. And it's another slower ball, this time Boomer helps it away, wide of mid-on, and gets a couple. Well, we were talking about how sensible Ishant Sharma had been, it was a very good delivery by by Ollie Robinson, but Ishan thought he was Viv Richards going across the pitch, trying to get through that leg side, and he knew the moment it hit him on the pad, it was plumb in front. And that's where, as a captain, you do just need to be patient against these tailenders. They will hit a couple of good shots and they'll frustrate you, but they are tailenders for a reason, especially these Indian tailenders. You look at their averages. Not all that proficient. Wait, wait, wait. Looks like Bumrah has come out with some intent here. So Joe Root has uh, moved Moen Ali to a deepish mid wicket position. He's just got a, two catches Johnny Bairstow and Rory Burns. Root himself has come from slip where he normally stands just so he can chat to Anderson and Robinson and get the field absolutely right. It's a game of very fine margins. You want to be as precise as possible with your field settings. So he just pushes Anderson a bit deeper now, and he asks Moen Ali to go out to the deep mid-wicket boundary. I think he senses that Boomer wants to play some shots. Slow ball edge, but short of... Butler, a diving Butler, he had to go for it because it was never carrying to Bairstow. End of the 90th, 2-11 for eight. This slow ball from Robinson really is slow. You can see the fingers on top of the seam and it floats out there. And that was actually what saved Boomer in the end because it wasn't quite enough on the ball to get through to Joss Butler, but absolutely... Intent on playing his shots here, Jasper at Bumrah. I tell you what, it's an excellent knuckle ball, isn't it? Just brilliantly ball. Just floating down, almost wobbling down. Part of a fast bowler's armour in one day cricket, but in this situation, Robinson sensing that it's a, a useful delivery to bowl at tail enders who are looking to play some shots. Mark Wood standing at the end of his mark. Short leg, just one slip is Rory Burns. Gonna take every run. And Bumrah gets down to Mark Wood's end. And he may well know what's coming. Yeah, and you can absolutely understand why Joe Root's got a lot of the fielders out. Just feel for Mark Wood, you need a couple, probably a leg slip in there, I would have thought, with the short leg and maybe a gully as well as a slip. You just think about the telling is they're going to probably back away. The ball can easily loop up on that offside. Actually, I think Johnny Bairstow has come into a gully right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tie his legs together. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be getting a big stride in anyway, after, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a half volley to drive. 
So once again, Root being very particular. He's got loads of fielders on the leg side. There's only one man in front of square on the offside. Since his bummer is looking to swipe to leg. So deep mid wicket, deep backwards square, fine leg, short leg, and two men saving one on the leg side. Well, it was short and it was fast, and Boomer tried to swing it away leg side. If that had come off the top edge, I fancy it would have gone a long way. He's bowling quickly here, Mark Wood. Watching the ball like a hawk. He knows exactly where it's going to be. And he's intent on playing his shots, but he was probably... A yard or two too slow on that one. Again, he tries to swing one away, leg side. At some point, Mark Wood, you assume, is going to try and bowl something at the stumps. Maybe try and soften up Bumra first of all, and then full and fast. Well, I don't think Jimmy Anderson's going to be particularly keen to see the full delivery. He'd be happy to see a couple more short ones first, I think. It's just flashed up on the big screen, 94 miles an hour, and that great roar from the crowd. Short again. Oh, and that's done Butler. I think it's off the glove. Butler was going leg side. And Jimmy Anderson is very fine down there at third man, almost in a, a deep fly slip position. So he saved a certain four by being so fine. Yeah, this is genuine pace and hostility. I think off the back arm, actually. Joss Butler had no chance. Just wrong footed, wasn't he? Uh, and you can see why everything looked leg side and Butler was anticipating that. Yes, but Bumra, thankful for the single to get up the non striker's end. Fine leg and third man are, are very fine, which is good for the tail enders. ball just cuts through Shami beaten for pace well Mark Wood has got a stiff and sore shoulder but he's showing no lack of ambition and pace this morning this is excellent from him and you can tell these Indian tailenders do not like it yeah, who a, does there's a bit of chat again between Bumrah and Root who's at mid on so they're giving back plenty and a bit with interest, given what uh, happened on the third evening. Oh, it's another gorgeous delivery that gets past the outside edge, but only just 213 for eight. Highly charged atmosphere out in the middle. Mark Wood bowling thunderbolts. And Jasper Bummer getting a bit of attention from the fielders. Just keep your eye on Ollie Robinson. He's going to mix up his pace with the odd knuckleball here. Swung away by Bummer, but only as far as Sam Curran. Indian lead creeping up. It's now 187 runs, and England will be very keen to get this innings wrapped up. 
ASAP. Million pounds for the foundation. Fantastic, Andrew. Absolutely blown away, Athers. I mean, just astounding amounts and um, so appreciative of the support that the, the crowd here at Lords has shown us, all the Sky viewers. It's extraordinary and can allow us to do so much good as a foundation. So thank you to everyone, including, of course, you guys, the commentators, who have plugged it so well for us as well. Good shot from Shami, but there is a man out there. It's Dom Sibley at deep point, so just a single. So far, Jasper Brummer has played a shot of all. Interesting to see how Oli Robinson deals with this. We've seen a couple of slow balls from him already. He's got the scouts out on the leg side as well, so don't be surprised if there's a short ball. Slower ball again, that he bowls so well. And Bumra shadows or practices a straight drive. <laughs> it's not entirely what he's looking to do in real time. Just looking out at the fielder's leg side, Sam Curran, Moeen Ali, James Anderson are the three who are in the game. and just brought in 10 yards at uh, long on by Joss Butler. That is a lovely straight drive. That was the shot that he practised after the previous ball, and he was unlucky because it crashed into leg stump at the non-striker's end. Well, he'll be thinking there's no value in hitting the ball straight because that is a perfect shot, and he's got nothing for it. Shami was out of his ground. Most batsmen would be diving back to make their ground, but there was no touch on it from Robinson. Slow ball again. Bomber swings away to Anderson at long on. Just the single. 216 for eight. Nick Knight at third man. I was just talking a lot about the slow ball, the knuckle ball of Ollie Robinson. A, he's good at bowling at B, he's very good at disguising it as well. Let's just have a look and show you. If we go, you can see there, that's a normal, classic outswing position, fingers behind the ball, and as he gathers there, that is when he makes the adjustment. So as a batsman, you see none of that until it's too late. The ball then flicks out. Now, a lot of bowlers will do it differently. Some will perhaps show you it in their run-up. Some will perhaps cover the hand so they can't see it as he runs in. But Ollie Robinson does it the tough way, because as a batsman, you think it's an outswinger, and then at the last minute, it's not. It's brilliant skill. It's also a highly charged atmosphere out there. I mentioned that Bumrah was getting plenty of attention from England's fielders. It's Butler and Root who are engaging in a bit of chit-chat now. Michael Goff, the umpire, just trying to calm things down. Bumrah's giving plenty back as well. And this is all a hangover from what happened on the third evening when Bumrah tore into Anderson at the end of that day's play. Cricketers don't tend to forget. No, and it looks like Jasper Brumra is not content with what's been said. Michael Goff doing the right thing. Trying to get in between the players and calm things down, as you say. Things bubble up in a test match, especially on day five, especially when the match is on the line. Well, somehow he's got that through the offside. I, I, I can't think that that's where he was looking to hit the ball, but look at the reaction on the Indian players' balcony, where Virat Kohli is standing, staring, gesticulating, clapping. They are trying to give Bumrah some support from the edge because they recognise that he's under immense pressure from England's bowlers and fielders.
The lead is 193. Well, every run is absolutely crucial now. You think about India getting that lead beyond 200. Suddenly that looks like quite a substantial chase. 79 overs left in the day. So pressure on all these players right now. One of my bomber gets ball in hand as well. Remember, England have got a bat yet, and he's got a bowl. Terrific stuff. Nearly an hour into the final day, and India's lead 193. Still two wickets to take. England just need to be a bit careful here with Bumrah. They've got most of their field out on the leg side. Bumrah increasingly is standing to the leg side and looking to it through the offside, which is sensible on his part because there are no fielders there. But Joe Root just might need to rethink this field right now. who turns down Shami at the non-striker's end and keeps the strike. Well, this one hit him hard. He went for the shot. Too much pace and right on that grill. Yeah, there'll be a, a moment here, and it's probably not a bad thing as far as the game is concerned. A, to check that Boomer is okay because that was a fast ball that hit him hard at 90 miles an hour. And, uh, I hope that he's okay. There'll be a the, the, the mandatory concussion test that has to be taken. But it may just uh, allow for the players just to take a moment and bring a bit of calmness to proceedings. I think while uh, Bumrah is taking that concussion test, the umpires have said it's a good time to take drinks. So that's what we will do with India's lead standing at 193. It's been a very dramatic morning here at Lords. India began the day 181 for six. 
with the brilliant wicketkeeper batsman Rishabh Pant just showing one glimpse really of the danger that he posed to England. He ran down to Anderson and thrashed him through the offside. He's getting good support from Ishant Sharma, but a lot was resting on Pant, and when that happened, England were absolutely delighted. Good bit of bowling from Ollie Robinson, end of the dangerous Pant, and then Ishant Sharma, who... <laughs> Continued to play as tailenders often do, but was undone by an excellent slower ball, a knuckle ball from Ollie Robinson, and was palpably LBW. And since then, it has been all happening. Gaspit Brummer, who gave Jimmy Anderson an earful on the third evening, has been getting a bit back himself. He's just been hit a nasty blow on the head and has gone through a concussion test. And he's okay, and drinks have been taken. And the situation is that India are still 220 for eight, leading by 193. England have been bowling short at Bomra, maybe too short, nothing at the stumps, and they've got to think about getting him out as well. Mark Wood, who didn't uh, take the field at the start of play, has bowled quickly since coming on. does get this one straight fast full and straight and Boomer gets it away for a single out to Dom Sibley do you think that drinks break Andrew Joe Root might just have got his fielders and bowlers round and just had a, a, a kind of calming word and try and just refocus on what they have to do yeah I totally agree with you highly charged emotional atmosphere with the test match on the line and it's a time for cool heads yes I don't mind then making those Indian batsmen feel uncomfortable, but you can't afford to lose it yourself. And England must be thinking about how best to get these two out at the moment. Yes, short balls are fine, but you still need to bring those stumps into play, in my opinion. No, Shami sent back and wisely sent back by Boomra. They survive. The over, the 93rd over, and the lead is 194. It is tricky with these type of players in because they're going to play their shots. The ball can go in all sorts of different directions. So that is the challenge for Joe Root. He's obviously thinking about the wicket, but he's also thinking about saving runs. Just like to see a couple more fielders in catching positions. Maybe a couple of slips and a gully, and then the men out there. And for Ollie Robinson in particular, just to hit a length a bit more often. Well, India's last three wickets at Nottingham put on 73 from memory. And after the match, Virat Kohli said his tail enders have been working really hard in the nets up in Durham. Shami, 43 minutes at the crease. Bumrah, 26 minutes. And he pulls away, fine, but just for a single. And Mark Wood bowls the ball in. He didn't want to throw it in because he's got a sore shoulder. But again, Coley will be very happy with the efforts with the bat of his bowlers here. Root again is... He's out of slip now. He wants to, to chat to Robinson, so he stood at mid-off. I don't think England have quite got it right since the dismissal of Ishant Sharma. They've rather lost their heads. They've bowled halfway down at India's numbers 9 and 10. Very few catches in place. slow ball from Robinson again but I agree with you Athis I, I think for tail enders you still need to think about what your best delivery is how's the best way of getting them out sometimes you just bring your line a little bit straighter than maybe for a top order batsman so you're bringing in off stump middle and off on a length and yes the odd short ball definitely 
Uh, you can easily get drawn into trying to bowl magic balls or too many short balls. A good example there for Ollie Robinson. He, he's bowled very full half volley, and that's kind of where Bumrah wants him to be bowling. Credit to both these batsmen as well. Bumrah's got a dozen now, Shami 10. These are precious, precious runs in a very tight test match. The lead almost up to 200 now, it's 197. He's played that very easily through the leg side to take the lead to 198. End of the 94th, 225 for eight, Nick Knight. Thanks, Seth. Yeah, I mean, you guys are right. Obviously, emotions are, are running pretty high out there at the moment. That seems to be the way England's bowlers are approaching it. They're banging in a lot of deliveries, a lot of short stuff. Broomer, of course, involved with Jimmy Anderson. All of that said and done, let's just have a look at the lengths here that England bowled. Now, this is since Pant's dismissal. So when perhaps you're bowling at the tail end here, 9, 10, and 11, and nearly every other ball is short, and that's perhaps telling its own story. Now... You look at the field, and Andrew Strauss and Michael have been talking about it. Actually, the bowlers are bowling to their field because there isn't really anyone at slip. And I think Mikey's coming on commentary now, and he's going to talk about it as well. But the reason you bat 9, 10, 11 is because you don't pick up length so well, and you don't play the best ball that a bowler can bowl as well. And I'd like to see, I think Mikey would be the same, just a bit more length, but also Joe Root setting a field that allows a bowler to bowl length. So if we have a look at this field, there's only, what, fifth slip perhaps a sixth slip should we call him that Rory Burns and a short leg now it doesn't mean as Mikey I'm sure will explain doesn't mean that you can't get a wicket particularly when Mark Wood is bowling quick but as a general plan I think England have been a bit too short thoughts Mikey preaching to the converted I have spoken about this sort of thing on so many occasions here on Sky and on other networks every bat out there has an edge Okay, it's difficult to concentrate on hitting the edge on this pitch because a lot of edges have not carried into the slip cordon. But if you're bowling to, as we call them, tail enders, a single. as you rightly said, Nick, these guys are not frontline batsmen with a great deal of skill. So if you're bowling to these lower order batsmen, fine if you want to be a little bit defensive because you don't want them to get too many runs, but I can't understand why captains are defensive all around the field. If you have five fielders in defensive positions, they should be on one side of the wicket and tell your bowler that's the side of the wicket I want you to bowl. And I can't see needing five anyway. But when you have defensive fielders on both sides of the, of the field, that's a little bit difficult for a bowler. I'm running into to bowl here, Wardy, and I'm looking at this field, and I'm saying to myself, how am I going to get this batsman out? I have to depend on him playing a bad shot, hooking a short ball to one of three men deep on the leg side, or backing away and squirting it down the third man or backward point. That's a ball that is very short. All of those five shots to those five men are very short balls. What if I want to bowl line and length and try and hit the stumps or hit him LBW or hit the outside edge? I haven't really got too many options here. Two hundred is the lead. And the captain loves it. He's been living every ball of this on the Indian balcony. What you said there, Mikey. How am I going to get the batsman out? That's what we hear from Shane Warne all the time in these situations. 
But the reason Root is putting so many scouts out and being defensive is because he is worried about the small margins that this test match could be won or lost. All they're doing is eking out these runs in the world. There are a multitude of positions here that they can get singles. The only people preventing a single is a slip, which obviously you can't get a single to slip, and the bat pad. Every other fielder you can get a single to. So once you get bat and ball, unless you scoop it in the air to someone, you're getting runs. The best way to prevent someone from getting runs is to make sure they are in the pavilion. Get them out. Absolutely with you. Root has gone to a gully position now. That's another position you won't get a single to the bowler. <laughs> They've added 19 runs, Shami and Bumrah. Root is worried about the lead. He's thinking about the time left in the game. Final hour, just to let you know, starts at 5 o'clock. Or if 15 overs are left, whichever is the latter. Root is juggling, trying to get wickets, trying to keep the runs down, and time. Straight into the stumps yet again. Even the stumps can't save a single, Michael. <laughs> Two two nine for eight after ninety five. The lead is two hundred and two. Lovely shot, this. <laughs> In some test match, isn't it? Very exciting, very interesting test match. Ebbs and flows throughout the five days. Is he coming into the attack? Does seem so. I don't see him bowling a lot of short balls, so he just may see a slightly different tactic here now. Man that in the picture with Coran. In my opinion, I'm thinking 99% of the people here's opinion. He's the best bowler in the team. Why is he bowling? I hear you on that as well. Just looking at the field that Root is setting now for current, even what has gone before and what you have been discussing. Fine leg, deep square leg. And a deep backward point. Johnny Bairstow was at third man. He's now coming up. Looks like to catch. Well, there's a bit more pressure on the single with this field for Curran. I'll tell you what, Ward, with this field, the batsmen, both of them will be thinking less about short balls now. So they could get caught out with one just by surprise. But with the previous field, they are constantly thinking about the short ball and the short ball is more effective with a surprise element to it yeah, well I think that's absolutely key with with Curran he, he's got a, a quickish bumper it's a slippery short delivery but I think you're right with the field that's been set previous it was more like to physically intimidate the batsman as opposed to necessarily just trying to get him out A fumble it doesn't cost the team anything though. So much going on, isn't there? Bet your last penny that England's batsmen, the two openers, and Hasib are thinking about when they're going to start their innings. <laughs> Thinking of the challenge of facing a very fired up, you would think, Jasprit Boomer. Can't 
can't wait to see how animated Virat Kohli will be when he's captaining the fourth innings, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Looking for a second. We'll get back quite easily. Well, not least because Mark Wood is not able to throw the ball in. He's got to bowl it in. Damaged shoulder is giving him pain. But bowl quickly again. Extremely quickly. So then put a few speeds of some deliveries up on the scoreboard and fans were cheering that's a good shot just a single though they cheer for anything this crowd though Pujara facing a hundred balls 200 balls getting off the mark <laughs> been very engaged to be engaged with Cricket has been superb. Been engaged with the Ruth Strauss Foundation. Had a cracking few days at Lords. He can't sit still. Coran no coming round the wicket. Uh. 96 ball overs ball, 233 for eight. Well, another bowling change. That's what Winbiz says. India just 31% chance of winning. England still a favourite. Draw equal with India. And that's the bowling change that we're going, going to be seeing. Mark Wood is out of the attack. Moin Ali comes in. Operating from the pavilion end on this occasion. He has had a good test match, Wardy. Fantastic. So good to see Moen Ali back. He batted nicely. Didn't get a whole heat, but he batted nicely. And I thought his bowling in the first innings was very good because he's come straight from the 100, one-day cricket, short format cricket, where it's a completely different style. And he gave Joe Root a bit of control with very little assistance from the surface. And then yesterday, when the ball did turn, he was a real wicket-taking threat. Got rid of Rahane, but the delivery to get rid of Jadeja was special. He seems in a very good place. He spoke with us last evening on interview, and he seemed very content with where he's at. Good to see. Slip, short leg. And the tail ender's eyes light up. Oh. I was trying to do the maths, Mikey, as to how many overs left in the day. 75 overs and five balls, and of course, you lose a couple in the one you're in for the change. The lead is 206. It's sort of like two and a half, just over two and a half runs and over if the innings was to end now, right now, with no more runs added. Looking for two again. This could be one of the epic finishes, could it? It definitely could be. We know it's, test, it's a test, test match get, if I can get it out. But what we have to consider is that the game has changed so much. There can be so much quicker scoring in test matches than we have seen in many years gone by. Most teams years ago would think setting a target in a test match, a declaration, if you give a team three and a half runs per over, over 70 overs or more, you have an excellent chance of winning. These days, I think you need to be a bit more per over. Run 
Williams again. Another couple. This lead is building. Bolton on for Mark Wood, of course, who left the field. Third is seven for eight. Partnership is growing. A Twenty eight run partnership between these two now. Captain up in a bit more pleased with proceedings. Can someone tell me why drinks are on the field? We had a drinks break. It's not steaming hot. This is not Mumbai. Both teams keep on bringing out drinks at any arbitrary time. Absolutely right, Mikey. The answer's simple. If you want a drink, retire thirsty. Yep. Well, that could be more runs. Fortunate runs, but runs nonetheless. May go all the way. Yes, it does. It's a brute of a delivery. Sam Curran is not a tall man. That is taken right on the shoulder of the blade. Wow, that's flown over Rory Burns and Joe Root's head. Partnership 32. That delivery, of course, just shows you how difficult it can be batting on the last day of a test match. Saw what happened with Pujara yesterday, just took off. Someone exploded off the pitch again. The first 20 overs of England's innings are going to be electric. India are going to be so fired up. There'll be plenty in the pitch with the new ball and the class of the likes of Bumrah. So much at stake. fourth innings of the game England have got to get the third innings done first it's been handed the the numbers from the New Zealand test at the start of the summer New Zealand set England 273 to win and 75 overs which was a run rate 3.64 and they didn't go for it just trying to do the numbers now 74 overs and two balls remaining lead 216 it's under threes exactly three Both Bumrah and Shami are looking more and more confident. Do you think there's any chance that England won't go for it? <laughs> Body, I would hate to think that they wouldn't. 273 off 75 overs at just over three and a half against New Zealand. They didn't even think about it. I'll say that was the beginning of the season and they hadn't woken up yet. <laughs> Delicately put. Ah! 
243 for eight. Well, there have been some good run chases here in the past. I can clearly remember that one at the top. 344 for one. More recently, you can see that the targets haven't been huge recently, and you can see that most of them have been accomplished quite easily. Three wickets down, two wickets down, couple were eight down. Here is Moen Ali again. West Indies run chase was the David Goward declaration, wasn't it? The Gordon Greenwich double. Yes, that's right. And he wanted to declare from the evening before. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine chasing down 344 on the last day, starting to bat on the last day, and got them comfortably? Easy. <laughs> oh, that is four. The crowd are into it, the captain's into it. That's a fantastic shot from Shami. All the talk coming into the series was about the fragility of the lower order and four tail enders in this lineup. Partnership is 38, Shami is 25 not out, Boomer is 20 not out. Just a single this time. Both of these batsmen, Shami and Bumrah, have stopped taking risks. They are looking to bat as normally or sensibly as they can. And 48 for it. Clouds around again today, but they are pretty high. No problems at the moment. Six to seven runs in this session. Two wickets. England need another two. You saw Jimmy Anderson with the ball at mid on, shining it. Not too sure why he's shining and not bowling. Here he is loosening up. Perhaps he's coming on. substituting for the captain route is off the field the innings run rate is two and a half woods obviously not available to bowl at the minute the innings run rate is two and a half but it's nearly four runs and over that they scored this morning it's been perfect for India Just proves that a good line and length about off stump still can work.
the other thing you've got to throw into the equation is that the day progresses mikey is the forecast is for cloud cover all day possibly the odd shower later so we might have bad light coming in at some point what did we get to six o'clock yesterday the route took that second new ball and the umpires promptly took the players from the field confident now these two proper shots they're looking like proper batsmen no after all the battering that they got earlier on they are feeling very comfortable now against this space and with this field placing just batting normally He was looking down on the ground, Bumra, posing for the photographers and didn't realize a run was on. Brings carried. up the 250 as well. 250 for eight at the moment. Ooh. Hold the pose, hold the pose. There's a run. <laughs> Dread overs bold, 250 for eight. And the lead is 223. Problems for England and Joe Root. Wonder if there's going to be a change at the pavilion end. Anderson appears to be walking quite purposefully towards the umpire. What a test match. You got your wish? Should have been bowling a long time ago, Wardy. He's the best to bowl in the team. Yes, happy to see Mark Wood because you need pace against the lower order. If he can blast them out. But when it comes to the skill aspect of it, he's top of the draw. Lights are coming on. Has been overcast. And he has a similar field to the one that Sam Curran had. Slip, gully. Four other close in fielders to prevent that single. No back pad. They've had a short leg most of the morning, haven't they? Mead has disappeared. And it popped straight up to where he's been standing for a good portion of the morning. works Coley couldn't manage it I don't see these two managing it Over his head. That may go all the way as well. Four more. Contrasting expressions from the two captains. This was sweetly timed. Flick of the wrist. 
over Bairstow's head. The 228. This is Viv Richards batting. <laughs> Sorry, now I've drawn in confidence. The partnership, no four to six. Just out of reach again. Another couple of runs. Another flamboyant shot. The ball is teasing Johnny Bairstow. Fingertips. Fantastic effort. Ali does a rock. 257 for eight. Say what you like about England's tactics, the spirit and resilience of these two Indian tail enders, Mohammed Shami and Jasprit Bumrah, has been absolutely fantastic. The partnership is worth 48. Bumrah has only had double figures twice in Test match cricket before his 22. Shami 33. Oh. This is a better end, I think, for Moin Ali to bowl, or at least yesterday during that uh, long spell of his. He certainly looked more threatening from the nursery end than the pavilion end. Down, down, I think that carried. Root on his haunches with his head in his hands. The ball somehow just snuck through. Searching for the second wicket of the morning and this was always going to be the way, wasn't it? Were they ready? Partnership moves to 49. And the partnership is now 50. And an excellent one it has been. Huge cheer from the crowd. Huge cheers on the Indian players' balcony as they congratulate these two Bowlers who have not always shown great ability with the bat, but today we've got so stuck in with their team in need. I mentioned that this is a better end for Moen Ali because he can threaten both edges. There's a bit of rough to bowl into, and he's got the slope to help threaten the outside edge as well. That's what happened earlier in the over when he brought the outside edge, but Root unable to cling on. The lead, 2.32. Desperately looking for this wicket to keep themselves in the hunt for a test win at Lords, England. Thick outside edge on its way down. Mike Atherton, I think if we thought if India were leading by 232, we'd be thinking, I wonder what pant would be on.
be not out something. Absolutely, but that's in keeping with this test match, really, which has been unpredictable. Has swung back and forth. For the moment, Pant got out. He thought, well, England must have a, a strong advantage at that stage, but combination of poor tactics and excellent resilience from Shami and Bumra, who have now been together for 50 precious runs. Fascinated to see what uh, Windvis has as England's fielding just starts to slightly disintegrate. Root dropping one best, or a fingertip catch, and now a misfield. It's surprising to think that some of the best shots that we've seen from, been from the tail end of India. It's been an area of India's game that's been criticised, lack of contribution to Indian scores. It's certainly changing now. I think it was something Kohli recognised because he obviously thought about playing with this balance of four and one instead of Ashwin. So it was going to put a premium on runs down the order, especially with Thakur not fit, which is not for this game. And, and therefore those seamers like Umrah Shami, Siraj, have been working really hard in their pre series camp up in Durham Working really hard on their batting as well as their bowling the measure of that is the fact that Boomra now has more runs than wickets in test cricket Say that he came into this series with great form. <laughs> Top edge over route, more frustration for England. And that's the other thing, Bumrah comes scampering back for two, even when Mark Wood was bowling at his quickest and most hostile, there was no sense that Bumrah wanted to avoid the strike. Clonked on the head again, I, th I thought that was a top edge, but for the second time this morning, Bumrah has been hit on the helmet, it's not quite as fierce a blow as previously one because Anderson is bowling and it was more of a glancing blow this time so I'm sure he'll be okay. Well overnight Jasper Bumrah would have been thinking about what he was going to face today because he peppered Jimmy Anderson at the back end of England's innings. He's a fast bowler, he knows he's going to one, get it a little bit from Jimmy Anderson. Two, from Wood and the likes. Second concussion test this morning. Do you think he asks him the same questions? <laughs> or does he vary them? <laughs> Look, to be fair, he's probably just saying to him, are you seeing that front elbow? It's looking pretty good, isn't it? I think that's the other thing, too. When, you, when I look at Virat Kohli and what he's done to this team, he's brought just a different way of playing the game. One of it has been fitness, and I think that's led to this stock of fast bowlers coming through that if someone is injured or out of form, they just keep bringing them into the team. And then once he sort of got that under control, he said, well, what's your next challenge? And I think he's probably had this in his mind for some time to say, this is the new way in which India's playing the game. But he couldn't do it all at once. And so bit by bit, he's been working away at ways in which this Indian entire squad can improve. He would have had in the back of his mind the tail enders, and now it's come into fruition. Sure has 235 the lead. Wondering about uh, what our win predictor would have. The draw a short while ago moved to favoritism. And the significant thing is there, not just how much of a favourite the draw is now, but 
how England's chances have diminished. India, according to the book, very much uh, second favourites over the draw. See how things can switch in a tight test match. Just switch so significantly within about 20 minutes play. 262 for eight. At the end of every single day, I think everyone thought that this test was going in a completely different direction. India sent in by Joe Root, having won the toss four days ago. They put on 364 with a chance of really pushing forward. And then the next day, early wickets, KL Rahul after that magnificent century goes second ball of the day and things start to shift back England's way. And seesawed all the way through. Be a brave person to say where it's going to finish now. That's been a fantastic test match. Absolutely fantastic game. What do you think Virat Kohli is thinking at the moment as well? Because he's an aggressive kind of guy. He looks at it. He might look at Winvis and say, oh, I don't like the percentage of that draw. Shami down the ground, over Anderson's head, one bounce four. Jimmy Anderson sitting three quarters of the way to the boundary. Joe Root saying to Shami, go on if you want to try and get it over him. There's your option. He's taken it and teased Jimmy Anderson all the way. Anderson just uh, pushed a little deeper now. Thumped away into the offside. Takes Shami to 40. enjoyed his forward defence today. It's a huge stride. There was a, a moment just before we came on, Mel, where he played a gorgeous forward defence and he was admiring it so much he forgot to take the run almost. Oh, edged again, pass route again. No chance this time, but it, more valuable runs, two of them. Tipping his forward defence is one of the shots that he's really worked on. He gets that right, then he can stay out in the middle and he's got the opportunity of score runs, which is exactly what he's doing now. He did that at Trent Bridge. He's scored 50 runs plus in this series. The, that second outside edge has encouraged Root to bring Hamid over from short leg to a second slip, effectively. Two hundred and seventy for eight. I'd love to see and hear about the development of Boomer and the Tails advancements in their batting. I'm sure that one of the top orders probably taking them under the wing batting coach will play a role. Uh, the game we had at Lords earlier in the year you know, when England played New Zealand and Kane Williamson set England 273 and 75 overs that was 3.64 and over England absolutely refused any notion of a run chase and just blocked it out 
68 overs remaining right now for 243. I remember watching the start of that test match. Thinking to myself, it'll be interesting just to see how they start. Straight away I thought, they're not going for this. And I heard Joe Root post that game, saying, oh no, we're going to see how he went to begin with and then we're going to make a decision, but I thought, no. <laughs> No, absolutely right. They showed no intent at all on that occasion. Disappointingly so. Rate required now, just a fraction over what it was then. 3.64 then, it's about 3.75 now, but for a shorter run chase. And uh, maybe a key difference is also that Root is in the form of his life, which he was in pretty good form then, but maybe not quite as good as now. I know a lot of things that can come into play with this question I'm going to ask you, but then I think, well, Virat Kohli, what are you thinking now? If you know that was the situation back then, I mentioned declarations before. But if you want to give yourself the best chance of winning this test match, India and Virat Kohli, you need to dangle something, don't you? Or do you? Is sending in England into a really defensive mode Another good opportunity for them to, to get 10 wickets. We've got 10 minutes to lunch, so that's going to take three overs off. So we'll be left with about 63 overs, 64 overs at lunchtime. Club lights are on, clouds are in. I wonder what he's thinking. You don't want to get to the end of the day and light to be an issue and you've only got one out and right spinner <laughs> in your ranks as well in Jadeja. Seventy two minutes for Jasper Bumra, ninety two minutes at the crease for Mohammed Shami. Oh, swings one away, it's Landed between Butler and Overton, who's down at fine leg. He knows he'll get a couple of those. From what I like about it, he just got in the inside line of it. No backing away. That ends the 105th over of the innings, 271 for eight. Well, there was plenty of chat when Jasprit Bumrah first came to the crease. It's calmed down a little over the last 15 or 20 minutes, but just while we were in the break, there was a bit more between uh, Anderson first of all, and then Root, and the umpire stepping in just to calm things down. It was at that point, really, that England lost the plot when Bumrah came in, as if because of what happened on the third evening, they were determined to bounce him. And that was the moment that really it started to go wrong for England. The lead was 167 when Rishabh Pant got out. And at that point, England were very strong favourites, you would have thought. They just lost the plot for about 40 minutes and everything changed. Swung away again by Shami, and again one bounce four. This is wonderful batting, great hitting. He moves to 44. And I think this shot was the exclamation point to the end of the conversation. I think that's just really 
It's almost like saying, don't poke the bear, because Shami said, no, no, no. We're in control of things out here in the middle at the moment. What a way to go to a half century at Lords. Mohamed Shami swings Moin Ali into the grandstand. The Indian crowd rise, the ball players' balcony are all on their feet as Shami celebrates a half century. Well, are we at Lords? Or are we at Mumbai? Because the sound from the crowd here is very pro India. It was the slog sweep from the crease, the ball before, then it was the advancement down the wicket. How important a knock is this for Shami in India? I think he enjoyed that, Mohammed Shami. The balcony certainly did. 50 of 57 balls, five fours. That huge six and a precious 96 minutes at the crease. Cut! Sure. Thought he just chipped it back to him then. It was his reaction after this. There he goes, hit it, he's waiting, he's go down, get down. Willing it, hoping it. First half century for seven years in Test cricket. And certainly it was the game at Trent Bridge on a deathly slow pitch that he got a previous half century, a game that Jimmy Anderson got some runs as well. These runs fashioned in far more difficult circumstances. Up in the air, Anderson won't get there. Nothing going right for England in the last 45 minutes or so. The lead now 256. Well, you just start to wonder too with the approach here from Shami, what the conversation has been from Virat Kohli, Ravi Shastri, about how to play this game. 256 run lead. Shami with his equal highest test match score underneath his belt. Message or a change of gloves or a combination of both. They've just come out to the middle. Partnership this has been between Shami and Bumra. It's worth 74 now. And has almost extinguished England's hopes of winning this game. bit more of that when Shami and Bumra first came in would have done the trick Anderson bowled three overs this morning just the three really the moment Bumra came in and fans dismissal Mark Wood came on Anderson didn't then bowl for over an hour said that they've almost extinguished England's hopes of winning this game Winviz has it at one percent Played some good shots. <laughs> that is a beautiful flip through the leg side. Flick off the legs, wonderful drives. They haven't all scored runs, but the shape of his shots. I think you'll be enjoying watching a little highlights package when he sits down of whatever system that they've got invo involved with the Indian team. He got to the non strikers then, then Richard Illingworth just looked at him rather admiringly and it brought a, a big smile from Shami. Yeah. 
not forget the part that Jasprit Bumrah has played as well. Very brave, determined, resilient innings. Vera Coley will absolutely love the fact that when he looks at this, he sees that 1% there. My concern, though, is that that draw at 75% is not what India want. Yes, they want to make sure they're not going to lose it. They still want to give themselves the best chance of winning it. lead of 258 it's now down to time and overs and what Virat Kohli thinks he needs to give himself a chance Shami's just got a bit of what you might call bat jar and, uh, now this new ball thumps into near the top of your bat can jar the, the area between your thumb and forefinger on the bottom hand something that tail enders tend to get because you need to be batting for a, a length of time be a, that's an unusual experience for Mohammed Shami was it bat jar or just the fact that he's had to grip the bat for so long as well solid from Shami. I think we'll get one more. It's 285 for eight. What I loved about that last shot too was you could hear the waiting call but it was almost as he hit the ball. That's how confident he was. The last over of a morning session that has gone to India. Big forward stride again from Boomer. There's not much in the pitch, to be fair. Odd ball straightening for Moeen. He's probably threatening the outside edge more than the inside. Ishant Sharma took the first over for India in their oh. first bowling innings. I think both Shami and Bulma will be saying to Vera, come on, look what we've just done for you. Route at slip. It's bowled really well. Moeen Ali on his comeback into the test team. Excellent role that he played yesterday in that long partnership where England striving through a breakthrough but held a tight grip on the game. Bowled excellently from this end, I thought. One ball left, and Shami will want to walk off for lunch unbeaten here and take the applause of the crowd the weather route will dangle the carrot and bring those deep fielders in well it was a, a dramatic session in many ways early wicket of Rishabh Pant the verbals that flowed when Jasprit Bumrah came to the crease but the last hour and a half has belonged to these two Indian tail-enders, Mohammed Shami and Jasprit Bumrah. They are taking India to safety. Partnership worth 77. Shami with his second Test match half-century. Bumrah with 30. And it means that at lunch, India's lead is 259.
which I think is far more than they would have hoped for when Rishab Pant got out with the lead standing at 167. England lost the plot a bit this morning. Tactics weren't right for a while and the game slowly started to slip away. You can see what that session means to the India players as they stand and applaud these two resilient tail-enders into the long room. What a morning we had, what a test match we have had. Much still to look forward to. As long as the weather plays ball, had a little bit of light rain. It is not bright here in North London. The floodlights are blaring. His lead is 259. We have 64 overs left in the day. Here we go with the afternoon session. Well, Coley didn't declare Bumble. And also, you can take two overs off. In fact, three. So England would have, but uh, no, this is promising. 61 overs. Lead is 259. He's getting ready. Some good ones from Robinson to start. He's going to declare at the end of this over so they don't score another run. England would need to score their runs at just over four and over. Decided not to chase down or even try and chase down the 273 that New Zealand set them. That was off 75 overs. There's a scoring rate of 3.6. Oh my goodness, what's that done? He's gone away for four something. It's really bizarre. Well, it's a banging bouncer. Just doesn't get up at all. Gazunda. Extraordinary delivery, yeah. It's about that. Hmm? <laughs> How's that missed? We just saw Corley putting his boots on, he's in his whites. It's chilly out there, we've just been stood out there. It's quite chilly. Lights are on, it's overcast. Just a couple of deliveries from Robinson. So there will be people asking if Coley is going to declare promptly after this over or the next over, why didn't he just do it at lunch? Oh, great shot. It's a weary Anderson that has misfielded. Once of the day when you just came out for an over, maybe to just frustrate the opposition. Just, oh, well, here we go again, get them in a negative frame of mind. If he fancies it, call it. Just, I'm just saying it's overcast, the lights are on. Two ninety four for eight. His lead is 267. Coley is getting ready, but not ready yet to declare. Otherwise, it's gloomy. It's a little bit brighter over the back of the pavilion, but then behind that, it gets a bit dark and gnarly. It's going to be Anderson, nursery end. And it all looks quite leisurely out there. Look at the England fielders are just wandering around. Anderson is chatting to Root.
They're enjoying the day. <laughs> Did you see what she just said there, that little girl? Declare! Did she? <laughs> Got some running repairs for Mohamed Shami. Already, apart from the batsman, who has a problem with his thigh pad, I think. Anderson's going to bowl for the first time from the nursery end. The total undress here. Not another streaker. <laughs> well, this is bizarre. He's had the whole of lunch to sort this out. It's not, it's test cricket. It happens all the time. Just standing around watching the grass grow. He's only just walked out. He's had a malfunction with his thigh pad. So we'll all just stand at these three and have a chat. What are England doing? Jimmy Anderson's having a game of catch. The game has stopped. Well, there's nothing happening. Absolutely nothing happening. There's no 12 men. What, what's he supposed to do? Bring a needle and cotton? Stitch it all back together again. How is the foundation doing? We've got over a million. They're all bidding for them dinners. I know what they're doing. They're bidding for them dinners without Nasra saying. Million quid. Thank you, everyone who has donated. It's truly wonderful. <laughs> Comical, isn't it? So you need to borrow a whippet, and Shami needs to borrow a thigh pad. Then we're sorted. Feel oh, well, yeah. So I've. Looks quite relaxed there, doesn't it? He's got a little hoodie and well coordinated with his check shirt. President, isn't he? Man, which one fits? Not that one. What about this one? Steady. We're nearly good to go, Bumble. And he's going to get out and he'll declare. Whilst we've been waiting around for 10 minutes. See President Kumar. Been busy during the Lord's test, haven't they? Right, Chami is ready. Fully shod with protective gear, and he's taken guard to Anderson. Slip in a gully. He probably needs to change his bat now. He's on 52, Shami. He's been terrific. Played some shots. <laughs> Looks thoroughly thrilled with life, Jimmy Anderson. Waiting game now, waiting to see what Coley wants to do. These are helpful bowling conditions. Snow past Roots away for four. I think that's it. I think Coley's called him in. He has. India's lead is 271. 
60 overs remaining in the game. So 298 for eight declared. England need 272. They need to score their own at over four and over. That partnership of 89, unbroken, has put India in a fabulous position. Well, a shake of the head from Shami. He was looking for a century. India have declared. The pair of them have been terrific. Shami and Bumrah. 56 for Shami, 34 for Bumrah. They've got the conditions. It is cloudy, it's gloomy, and the lights are on. 